I have a strategy question, which is to say, do you, I mean, the bank, JP Morgan, saying this is going to be accretive to them. Mark, I mean, I, I think, frankly, minimally accretive to them. Yeah. Do you think that this is actually a good deal for them? And the reason I ask is a lot of deposits, frankly, were already going to JP Morgan, right? They were already there. They don't really want to be in the super jumbo mortgage business. In fact, they've sort of gone away from that business to the extent that it's going to help their wealth management business. They already have a pretty healthy wealth management business. How does, this, how does this help them relative to a PNC or, I mean, Bank of America, it sounds like dropped out uh, probably, I think, on Saturday. Yeah. But how do you think about sort of what this does or doesn't do to the bank? I, look, I, I think it's a good deal for the system, right? I mean, and if you're... And oh, if I don't disagree with that. I'm saying, so, is, I'm saying a year or two from now, our shareholders of J.P. Morgan are going to say, I'm so glad that J.P. Morgan and Jamie Dimon stepped in, or are they going to say, hmm, it's, may, I Andrew, prefer they wish they did. Andrew, relative to the size of J.P. Morgan today, this is not that relevant. I don't think shareholders are going to notice three years from now. You're talking about a multi-trillion dollar bank buying a bank right. with a hundred billion dollars of right. assets. I mean, it, it's, it's a really small, maybe, small maybe transaction. On, maybe on the wealth right. management side. Do you see, you say maybe on, on the wealth on the, management on the, Maybe on the wealth management side. Look, First, First Republic had a great wealth management right. franchise, great connections. But the question is, does that wealth, franchise, wealth management franchise hold up That'll if you be, can't or, or yeah. offer them, you know, basically ridiculous mortgage prices? Yeah. Um, Longer term, though, what do you think in terms of other dominoes? Are there dominoes after this? I mean, we've talked about commercial real estate affecting so many different regional banks, but is there some bank that all of a sudden everyone's eyes are going to go, okay, we were over here, now we're over here? So I, I think this is not the end. Okay. Like, I don't think we're going to get three and done. Crises don't sort of end this easily. There will be other issues out there in the banking world. We've seen an interest rate move. It's unprecedented. We've gone from 0% to 5%. The Fed will most likely move again this week. Right. You know, the, the unintended consequences of that on banks and balance sheets is, is fairly substantial. So we, we will see something in the commercial real estate right. market. But look, that's what we're talking about. What you learn in the banking industry, it's usually the problem you're not talking about. Everyone wants to talk about commercial real estate. There's probably other things in the banking books right now that are going to probably be more problematic than the commercial real estate. Like what? Because I bet you know. <laughs> no, I, you know, I just think that it's never what you think it's going to be. You know, I'm almost equally as concerned about the consumer. You know, we've seen this massive consumer strength. We've seen consumers living off of stimulus payments. Right. We see the, st the stimulus payments winding down. Once stimulus payments wind down, we see credit quality deteriorating in the United States. We see the consumers still outspending. They've got to remember to stop spending when their savings runs out. Yeah. So w there are other factors besides commercial real estate. Commercial real estate is not the hardest one to deal with right. because you're dealing with big assets. You can amend and extend those loans. We were talking offline, and you, know, you talk about stress tests. You talk about how do you measure the health of a bank. One thing we were saying is Monte Carlo analysis, take, taking just something random and saying what happens what happens if the consumer stops spending right. and looking at what that does to liquidity and the assets on the balance sheet that can be some of the most valuable right. exercises that people do